Welcome to this very interesting conversation with PNC Men, one of the, the stalwarts of the real estate industry. And for a channel like ours, someone who can actually lead the path going forward when India struggles at what might be a very difficult time for the real estate industry. Mr. Menon, thank you so much for making time uh, for us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, like I was saying, it's a challenging time for the Indian real estate industry across the board, across all cities. Uh, your your company is present in most cities. You you stayed out of Mumbai so far. I understand there are plans to enter Mumbai in the future. If you were to list out um, what the major problems were at this time, and what in your mind is the solution for the real estate industry, we're seeing sales numbers slow down. Debt is being borrowed at astronomically high uh, rates. People are you know, industry is having trouble delivering on time, delivering quality. What do you think are the main issues we're facing in India right now? I think uh, there is demand because of the population, but people are not taking the decision to mm. cut the check. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'll say that, you know, it is and sentiment, driven by sentiment. So there's something price is going to come down. You know, lot, lot, you know, sentiment unfortunately cannot be controlled by anybody, right. neither seller or the buyer. And I'll say that we are going through the, the in real estate business, there are two this thing, negative and positive mm. uh, sec, uh, uh, sentiment. Now it is negative sentiment for the last, it started in second half of 14 and whole of 15. And I think uh, we have, we see that, I think, uh, my belief is that by the end of this year, things should change. On, on, what, though, on what basis will things change by the end of this year? By the end of this year, I feel, you know, because negative cycle has been there for almost mm -hmm. uh, two years. And I put the Indian cycle as about three years positive cycle and two years negative cycle. And that we, that we have to accept. It's a very cyclical business. So even within within uh, Shoba, if we looked at the numbers that came out this quarter, the sales numbers look weaker than they were the previous quarter. What's your game plan right now? What's the advice you're giving your management team when they're handling this market? If you say you believe it's going to turn around in the next couple of quarters, what, what sort of advice are you giving your team at this point? I think for me, yeah, it's a very strong, but still they're buyers. Mm -hmm. And the good marketing is very, very important. Shoba produces, as far as Shoba is concerned, we produce world-class quality in India. And uh, and so that my, I feel that somewhere we are not, uh, we are understated. So we have got to make enough efforts to state the product top. We don't have to overstate too. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the emphasis on marketing is very critical for Shoba. And I still believe that, you know, there are a lot of buyers sitting outside also. Mm -hmm. Outside the country, outside, the country, outside right. the country, which is mainly Gulf and other other parts of the world. So India is a long-term story. And is, is it possibly a crisis of confidence in the real estate industry? Not specifically with Shoba, but across the industry in general. If you think there is demand, there is a shortage of housing, but people are just not willing to cut that check at this point. See, some, sometimes you know, when you delay projects, mm -hmm. people, you know, at the end of the day, it's hard earned money. So. Proper companies, the companies which can deliver on time, the right quality, will have a great future in this country because India has got population of 1.25 billion people, and uh, the aspiration, the wealth is increasing in the middle middle end of the spectrum, and I think there there'll be a lot of lot of buyers. You know, every year we'll have many many buyers coming in, and the aspiration home is an aspiration. So outside of the south, you you've only entered the Pune and the Gurgaon market so far. I know you have a plan to enter Mumbai in the future. Tell us what the national plan is for Shoba in terms of expansion. The national plan is, you know, the, the main cities of India, Bangalore, Chennai, uh, Mumbai and Delhi. That is very important for us. We, other than uh, Mumbai, we have entered the rest of the markets. And hopefully another two years or three years, we should be in Mumbai too. I, I, my uh, my out view, out, uh, outlook of the uh, business is, it is better. It is better to limit to eight or twelve cities of India. Okay. Uh, we are currently doing three pa three places in Kerala, mm -hmm. which is Trishur, Kochi, and uh, uh, Calicut, okay. and then we do uh, Coimbatore. Uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, Mumbai as an additional, uh, and we are in Chennai, mm -hmm. and we are in Pune, we are in Delhi. With that, I don't think we have any plan for uh, expansion of the geography. Okay. This this itself, you know, for a targeted uh, 10 million square feet annual sale, you know, during the positive cycle, it is possible, mm -hmm. provided you plan, your financial structure should be very proper, 
you know, I always believe that, you know, the equity to debt, yes. uh, equity, if it is one, the debt should not be more than a half. Your debt is currently at 0 0.81 in Shuba National. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are close to uh, less than, of course, less than half. We are less than half the, uh, I mean, one to one, yes, half, yes. half equity. Yes. The, I will say that, you know, 12.33 is the advice for uh, Would you say we're at one two point uh, four five four six mm -hmm. now? Yes. You're also you're also expanding into hospitality, from what I understand. You've been in commercial and residential so far. Are there other areas of real estate that you're looking at as well? Hospitality, not from the uh, Shoba India. Okay. It's Globally? outside the country. Okay. Where yeah. where will you be looking at doing hospitality? Uh, we are already looking at two projects. We got the piece of land. Mm -hmm. uh, drawings are getting ready, and we should be uh, starting construction. Hopefully by the first half of next year. Is this Dubai or Abu Dhabi? You're looking at London. It as is well? Dubai only. Both okay. the projects are in Dubai. Both the projects yes. are in Dubai. What about the plans for your London uh, expansion? Uh, we are um, we are looking at London seriously. We are partnered with the uh, British family. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a 50-50. We call the company Shoba Europe, sure. and we should be uh, hopefully we should be because the market is a little slow there also. Uh, we should be launching it by the second half next year. From your Dubai business, um, your Maidan project and your Heartland project are massive, ambitious. Also, I must say, very beautiful plans. Um, tell us a little more about these projects and where you expect the sales to come in from. Is it largely, we understand, Indian citizens have become very uh, strong buyers in the Dubai market. Is that where you're expecting the money to come from or is it going to come in from across the world? See, if you really look at it from a general perspective, 150 nationalities buy in Dubai. <laughs> we got probably about 200 southern countries in the world. Sure. And out of which, uh, almost 75 percent, they are they are there in Dubai buying property. So, uh, but as far as I am concerned, if you really look at the percentage of Indian buyers, mm -hmm. it's almost 25 to 30 percent of the total sale. Right. So Indians are very important for the uh, Dubai market. And I, being an original Indian, uh, I feel that we have to tap that as a first resource of uh, selling to Shoba products to selling to Indian. Indeed. It, it, in our recent visits to the Dubai market, we discovered that a lot of the uh, people who are constructing in Dubai right now are focusing on Indian buyers or people of Indian origin at least because the money from other countries are beginning to dry up. Is that true? It's not true. Okay. Even today, you know, people from Saudi Arabia from the Gulf countries, from the Middle East, mm -hmm. Africa, um, CS countries, all of them come and buy. Is there a risk uh, there with the crude prices being where they are right now, the money from coming in from Saudi Arabia or from other Gulf countries might dry up as well? I don't think money will dry up. You know, individually people are already rich. Mm -hmm. They got their investment within the country, outside the country. It's like, you know, which is, it's not old, uh, old country. Saudi Arabia has been uh, rich for at least last uh, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So people are already rich. They've got enough wealth. They've invested well. So current uh, scenario of oil prices will come back again. We have seen many a times, you know, oil prices going coming down. Go. So I will say that Saudis and the other Gulf investors, because if you really look at what is the speciality of Dubai, mm -hmm. it's about, you know, it is a magnet for 3 billion people. The Indian subcontinent, Africa, and the Middle East put together, we've got 3 billion people. If you really look at the city which has been created, you have been there many times. The city which is created is the unusual city. There is no other city in this 3, 000, uh, 3 billion geographical uh, area. There is no other city which is comparable. When I look at, is there a possibility for a city coming up like Dubai in the next 10 years in any of these geographies? Yeah. I would say no. Yeah. Yeah. So let's actually learn from Dubai. Uh, you function within that market, and I know that within this market, um, where your son runs the business, one of the things that causes a great deal of pain for the industry are construction permits, our environment clearances, just generally the ease of doing business when it comes to building in India. In Dubai, you have a real estate regulator that's functioning very well from what I understand. What can we learn from that market? What do we need here? Here, yeah, of course, you know, um, we have been operating for the last 20, 21 year. We can bring in many excuses to say that this is possible, this is not possible, that's not. Overall, I think within our, within our country's culture, we are okay. Mm -hmm. 
I will not say that it is very difficult, it is impossible. We have been here for 21 years. I came from outside the country to do the business here. I don't think I have any complaints. You have no complaints at all? Because it's, 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 certain things are very slow, but not that slow. So long as you don't deviate, so long as you don't do things which are not right, hmm. I think uh, it, is, it is not that difficult to get In the In comparison to Dubai? Uh, compared to Dubai, of course, it's, uh, Dubai is much better. Mm -hmm. It's faster. So if you're saying, the, I mean, you, you yourself said that you don't envision another city like Dubai coming up in the neighborhood for a while. If India were to learn to move things faster, obviously, geographically, Dubai is a much smaller space to regulate from, from a regulation point of view. Geographically, we're talking about a massive space in India. But if we were to learn to regulate better or to improve the ease of doing business, do you foresee uh, Indian real estate or Indian construction, Indian vision for construction moving much faster? See, once you regulate, you know, at least confidence for the people who invest mm -hmm. in the project, you know, it'll become because it's very hard earned money and middle class and upper middle class. The money is very important for them. They cannot be let down. The regulatory authority could possibly control some amount of control should come to the real estate industry in this country. And at least this is on the, on the way already. Yeah. Uh, th there's been some, uh, you know, again, some argument about which, what sort of a role the regulator should take. In one view, there's a possibility we might get a regulator who looks at things slightly retrospectively. So even projects that have been launched that are under construction will suddenly need to be re-registered and uh, brought in. Do you think that if a regulator does come in, it should only be prospective, it should not look at things retrospectively. I agree, I agree with that. It should not be uh, from the from the rear side. It should, it should come from a cut-off date forward, not backward. Retrospective thing is not it's not, uh, it's not proper. You know, the other the uh, the other thing that we're looking forward to now is uh, the budget that will be announced by the at the end of the month by our finance minister. The, again, one of the demands that the industry has had is that uh, a reg a Industry that contributes about 6% of our GDP from real estate should be given industry status. Do you think it's high time that I happens? I think it's important well? also to make sure that, you know, it is given a proper status. Anywhere in the world, real estate is a very, very important part of the GDP, not only in India. And, you know, it is, it is treated very beautifully. Unless, <coughs> sorry, unless it's regulated properly, we need regulatory authority to come into picture regulate the whole thing. It is necessary for the best interest of the right kind of business people. Mm -hmm. So you think that if, if industry is given industry, if the real estate industry is given that industry status and we have a regulator come in, then a lot of the problems will get ironed out. Confidence will come back into this market. 100% it's going to help. Especially, you know, you look at the investors, you know, mm -hmm. investing from 20 lakhs a home or 10 lakhs a home up to whatever it could be, you know, especially in the mid, you know, up to one crore, it's hard earned money. Uh, I grew up in Bangalore and I remember looking at the Shoba brand always as, as you know, a brand that sort of envisages a certain amount of quality and luxury. But I understand that you're also now looking at the affordable housing space, both in Dubai and in India. Tell us about your plans. See, um, actually my son started that. I should give the credit to him. Mm -hmm. I never believed in because I always believed that I'm not capable of doing it. But he believed differently and he started the affordable and we got the precast factory very properly set up. I don't know whether you have yes. seen it. It's world class. And there is a possibility of doing, but, uh, but uh, the market is also huge. So he has entered and I think we have become very successful in it. Uh, we will start delivery and my only requirement is the quality cannot be compromised. Right. You can have lower specification, hmm. but very high quality. How do you keep the margins then, if you uh, make the same quality as you do your luxury uh, housing? Where are the margins for the business? No, the thing is, uh, specification and quality. Okay. You can have a higher specification and very good quality. Mm -hmm. People mistake the, uh, the specification and quality, you know. Okay. Specification, for example, you can put a tile which is about 30 rupees a square foot. You can put a tile which is 150 rupees a square foot. But if it is 150 rupees a square foot, tile is not placed properly. Mm. If you don't do the workmanship properly. It's a bad quality job, high specification. Mm. But wherein you can put a 30 rupees tile and then do it properly. And then it's a low specification, good quality. Product is low specification, mm. it's cheaper. Right. It's not useless. True. You know, it depends. You know, like we buy, buy clothes, we buy shoes. Everything is possible. You know, the spectrum is very broad. 
I also wanted to ask you, obviously, uh, you know, when you talk about the fact that the lack of regulation sort of stems the confidence a little bit in India, there are several people who are looking to make an investment in real estate right now who, are, you know, who, who aren't really sure what to do or where to do it. Would you recommend the Dubai market? Dubai is a very good place because the reason is that's the only sustainable city mm. in the whole of Middle East. There is no sustainable other sustainable. Huh? Sustainable means it's a long-term story. Okay. It's not overnight okay. magic. It's highly regulated. You know, it's very well regulated post 2008. They regulated the market, and it is which is one of the best cities of the world. It's there, the best mix of East and West. There is a little bit of a feeling that Dubai is in a double dip recession right now, that it's after 2008 and I'm looking at maybe another slump. See, 2008 was a very peculiar year in the human history. It was close to a depression. Mm. You understand? The whole world went to a spin at that point of time. The current situation is completely different. How so? Because, you know, it is a cyclical slowdown. It's not something which we saw when it was a shock and people did not know how long it will take for it to recover. Mm. Here we, just, we have clarity. Business, they, during the negative cycle also, business happens. At least 30 to 40 percent of what you could sell in a positive market, you can sell in the negative cycle also. In 2008-9, it was completely dead. It was completely negative, nothing, no business was happening. Today it's completely different. It is, we can never compare the 2008 again. Prices will on those days, prices came down by about 50 to 60 percent. You cannot dream that kind of situation to happen in Dubai again at all. I can tell you that. There were many speculators in 2008, man. Government brought in many regulations to make sure, sure that, you know, you reduce the speculators or completely make sure that they are not in the marketplace. For example, it, the government brought in a regulation. The moment you buy an apartment, you have to register it by paying up 4 percent registration fee. That's a very good move. And secondly, you cannot flip it unless you pay 50% of the E. Otherwise, you used to go buy in the morning, sell in the afternoon. Yeah. Make 2%, 5%, 10%, 20% even. All that speculation really hurt the, uh, the sentiment of the market. Mm -hmm. Today, it's different. Beautifully regulated. And people who are buying, mostly people who buy investors who are single investors or people who want to use a uh, use the property. What's your advice to people who are investing in real estate in India right now? I will say that in India, because of the population, because of growth, we are still growing at about 7% plus. And this, this country has got a consumer population also, you know. And it is changing. India is changing. And I have a feeling the next 25 years, it will be a completely different country. Uh, if, uh, you know, if I were to ask you about your vision right now uh, for Shoba in India, at least, where do you see the company going forward in the next say, we, we feel that there is a potential for Shoba in a positive cycle. Again, positive, negative cycle. Sure. We got an opportunity. India has got a potential for Shoba to give a opportunity to, to a business of 10 million square feet in the geographies that we are doing currently. There is a possibility. We've got to reach there. It'll take about five to six years to reach there. Uh, I also want to ask you right now about the fact that there's a lot of talk, and we heard it from the RBI governor himself, where he said that the real estate prices are too high. He said, I did my bit. I brought down the rates. Now it's time for the industry to bring down their prices. Do you believe that our prices are overheated or too high, and there's a need to bring them down before the, the end consumer can afford a home? I think the only place I've felt the prices are too high is Mumbai which is not realistic. This I used to feel. Bangalore is very, very proper. Delhi is proper. The rest of the geography is it's realistic. Is that why you've stayed out of the Mumbai market for so long? It's not, that's not the reason. We thought we'll come slowly to Mumbai market. Okay. And we are very keen. But, uh, you know, unless we get the right parcel of land, mm -hmm. we will not do it. But we are, I have a feeling that we'll be, we should be here in the next two to three years. The other question I want to ask you, and again, this is, uh, you know, it's a very stark comparison to, say, a market like Dubai, and that is the services that we receive as citizens from our local government. Now, we've seen people in Bangalore, Whitefield particularly, uh, then Sarjapur Road, go out into the streets demanding basic services, saying we want roads, we, we don't want to get stuck in traffic, we want clean air, we want clean water. We've had that problem in Delhi with pollution. We've had that problem in Mumbai lately. Uh, the air is just not fit to breathe. And citizens 
generally feel that the kind of money I pay to live in one of our cities, we don't get the services that we deserve as citizens. Is there a disconnect there between what our national government is seeing in terms of vision and what's actually being carried out in our cities? I think we have, what you said is very right because, you know, we've got very poor infrastructure, roads or water or electricity. Today, I think electricity is getting sorted out. We've got the central grid. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. And I am very optimistic about India. It may not be an overnight miracle. I have a feeling that next 10 to 15 years to 25 years, India will be one of the best uh, places to live. And uh, we are a great country also. We've got very honest people. What's the missing link? Because we've, we've, been, we've been a country of honest people for 60 years. What's, the missi what's missing right now I for us to arrive at... I think the political at... will, you know. To, okay. I would say the political will is missing. Mm -hmm. We've got to drive it, you know. All these countries which are prosperous, like Singapore, Le Kuan Yew, the leader, yes. Mohammed bin Rashid the, uh, of uh, uh, Dubai, a great leader with a vision and ability to deliver. We need leaders who can deliver. Mm. Of course, we are a democratic country. We've got our own challenges. But still, I will say that, you know, somebody will have to come. And all the districts, you know, I will say that we have got 650 districts in India. Yes. And we've got to make sure that each district should have some kind of a, uh, you know, we can say district, this district can do this. And implement a 10 or 15 or 20 year program on a timely basis, not on per plan and paper. It's important that we have the, we should have the, we need the political will to execute whatever we talk. You're an icon for us, at least in the real estate industry. Um, I want you to give out some advice to any entrepreneur who's watching right now, who, who wants to know, obviously these are tough times. How do you get through tough times like this? I will say that, you know, um, you have to be tough. Mm -hmm. When the, gates, get, the days get tough, tough gets going. You know, that's, that's that is going to be tough. You've got to make yourself you work hard and you have to have clean, clear map what exactly you want to do. Plan it properly. Planning is very important. Financial engineering is the most important component of real estate business. I will say that, you know, uh, my all my friends and myself, I'll say that we should have a discipline over a period of time to make sure that debt should not be more than half of the equity. Mm. That's a and uh, if you were to, like, you, you did of course uh, give some advice to buyers at this point, but there'll be a lot of home buyers who are holding on to their home loans in one hand, their down payment in the other hand, waiting, saying, okay, maybe the prices will come down. I will wait till the prices come down. What's your advice to them? And how do they make sure that they don't wind up in a situation where the building is half done and they're, you know, they have no home? What's your advice to someone who's looking to buy a home to live in? You've got to go to reliable developers. There are many of them in India today, proven, who have delivered their products. The customers will have to make a choice that you should go to a reliable developer who could be new, could be old, could, that they should, they should make the judgment to go to the reliable person or a reliable developer. All right, Mr. Menon, thank you so much for spending time with thank us. You. It was a pleasure thank to have this thank conversation. You very much. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you.